the Sony FX3 will have the new menu system, Canon and Nikon rumors are unreachable, and the Apple M1X ARM-based processor will have more GPU cores, CPU cores, and more execution units. This and more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And to make things just a little bit more exciting, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below or you can watch this video here, but please look at the terms and conditions as there are some age and location restrictions. And now, for the news. Now, if you've been trying to reach Canon rumors today or even Nikon rumors, you'll be greeted by an unresponsive white screen. So unless, of course, that's, you're using dark mode on your computer. Now, Canon Rumors has suffered a hardware failure and will be up and running soon as the issue's been fixed. So don't worry, Craig isn't going anywhere anytime soon. We're finally getting our heads wrapped around the extreme performance of Apple's ARM-based M1 processor. Being able to edit 8K video on a simple MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, it almost seems impossible. But multiple channels have proven that these low-end Macs can easily edit 4K video right out of the Canon EOS R5 without being optimized, and that's one of the trickiest 4K footage that people are having trouble with. And as far as 8K goes, well, these M1 Macs can easily handle 8K ProRes files as well as the Blackmagic 12K files. Expect more M processor equipped Macs this year. The only question is, will these new Macs have the same processor or will they have an upgraded M processor? Apple Insider reports that the M1X chip as an iteration of the M1, the chip features 12 cores instead of its predecessor's 8. Its internal GPU features 16 cores instead of the 8-core GPU in the M1. But nothing's mentioned about the amount of RAM. You'll remember that the M1 processor consolidates 5 chips, including the RAM. Could the M1X be in the next MacBook Pro? Perhaps, but those days of 16GB of RAM, well, they're pretty well done for us video editors. We need a minimum of 32, and... That's even on these efficient Macs because we're not just running video editor software, we're running a browser with multiple tabs, we're running image editors, compressors, and other apps. Question is, will Apple make the M1X with 32 gigs of RAM, or will they include multiple processors onto a single machine? What do you think? And what do you think of the M1 architecture? Do you purchase Macs? And for those of you that don't like Macs or just grew up on Windows or Linux, are you tempted by the capabilities of this new M processor? or ARM-based M processor. Oh, and one more thing. Apple Insider thinks that the M1X will have double the amount of execution units, which will allow it to drive up to three displays. So the previous one had 128 execution units, and the new one has 256. Screenshots of the Sony FX3 confirm that the Alpha camera, the new Alpha camera to debut next week, will have the new Sony menu first shown in the A7S III. And I know what you're thinking. This, this isn't news, but People are talking about it. It's a new menu system. It was out, came out last year. Sony isn't going to be putting the old menu system into any new Alpha cameras now, are they? Yeah, okay, I know, I know, I know. The Alpha, the A7C, agreed, that was a missed opportunity. But if you're gonna be hoping for a new menu system in the A7C or any other Alpha cameras, Sony said that the older cameras will not get the new menu system because it's technically not possible. Yeah, I don't really believe that either. These older cameras, sure, they have limitations. They might have a limited amount of RAM and whatnot, but there's no reason they couldn't redesign the old menu system to make it a little bit more intuitive if they wanted to. Technically impossible? Yeah, I just don't buy that. Resource, extent, or sorry, resource intensive and expensive to redesign? That's more like it. But now, let's go behind the scenes. So in this episode of Behind the Scenes, I really just want to talk about one thing, and that's the M processor architecture, this ARM-based processor. Uh, it's, I've been studying up quite a bit on this, and the architecture, this is what is called a disruption. A lot of charts are being shown around on the internet and various channels, and it is true. Intel's been moving kind of like this over the past 10 years or so, and the M architecture has been going like this. Uh, there's a definite disruption in play. Intel has been slowing down. They haven't been catching up. They haven't been keeping pace with Apple. And, the, and Apple's M architecture came out, what, about 10 years ago? It's not like Intel wasn't aware of, what, of what's going on. But none of us really thought that we were going to see these in 
desktop and laptop class machines with the capabilities to be able to match the best of what Intel or AMD were putting out there. And we've only gotten the M processor, the M1 processor. We, this is the first generation coming to desktops. And look, they're able to edit 4K video straight out of the R5 without being converted to Apple ProRes or any other Kodak. And that's huge, that's significant. I've got the Apple um, iMac Pro. It's the base unit. It's got eight Xeon processors. It's got 32 gigs of RAM and so on and so on. It's a very capable machine. And I can edit 4K, uh, 30 frames per second, even if, whether it's 8Q, HQ or not, it doesn't matter. And most of the times it's not gonna drop frames or anything. Now, if I try to edit C-Log in 4K 30, no, it's gonna be dropping frames like crazy. I pretty much need to convert to ProRes or put up with sluggish performance. But this computer is quite a bit faster than one of these entry-level Macs. We're looking at a factor of three times the price. And that's huge. To be able to edit 4K video without doing any work at all. Now, to be able to edit 8K or even 12K, like the 12K Black Magic, that you do have to convert it to Apple ProRes, but still, to be able to work on a machine of that class is just incredible. But knowing how Apple likes to do things, you've got certain limitations. I can't go ahead and buy one of those 13-inch MacBook Pros or MacBook Airs because, well, they're limited to 16 gigabytes of RAM. And that isn't enough for me doing video today with 4, 4K. It's just not enough. So quite often I've got Final Cut Pro running. I'll have compressor running. I'll have various other video apps that I have. If I want to convert something, I'll leave them running. I've got Pixelmator running. I've got many different apps running and they're all working hard. So I need that memory. I need a minimum of 32 gigs. Now on a, on a Mac, you, 32 gigs is kind of like 64 gigs on a Windows machine. You're, you're gonna, you can get a lot done with 32 gigs, but here's the thing with these machines, you can't upgrade. And that's what I want to talk to you about in this episode of Behind the Scenes. I've been complaining for years about what Apple is doing to their MacBook Pros that you can't upgrade. Everything is soldered onto the board. And soldering memory, I've never agreed with that, especially storage. But when I see these M processors and the architectures and the extra performance we get out of them, I'm willing to say, okay, you know what? For RAM, I see the benefits. I, I give, uncle, Apple, you were right. The performance from these M processors is worth me saying, okay, you know what? I'll buy the RAM up front. And I'm not gonna take too much of a hit for that, but the performance gain, the amount of time I save in my workflow, that is measurable. But still, there's no reason that the SSDs have to be soldered on. Yeah, I know why they're soldering it on. It's many reasons, but one is inclusive. They wanna keep the cost down as much as possible. But these are high-end machines. These are for professionals. These are for people that need to get things done quickly. And so what I'm doing is I decided when I bought the, the iMac Pro, I just went with the lowest amount of RAM, not RAM, <laughs> well, NV RAM, the lowest amount of solid state storage I could get, one terabyte. And I generally do not store anything on that one terabyte, any video projects I'm working on, because if it happens to fail, I, I, I'm not gonna be able to get that content back for at least five business days at most. And I, I couldn't imagine doing that. Working on a video, I'm almost ready to publish. The machine goes down, and now I've lost all that work. So what I use is I use Samsung, or I, you could use any SSD. So you could AngelBird, Samsung, um, SanDisk. I just happen to use um, uh, Samsung. I've been using them for years. They're the Evos. And I use those externally. So if I have any problems, like I did the other day, where for whatever reason I couldn't import clips and Final Cut would die all the time, yeah, no problem. Grab my SSD, plug it into one of my other Macs, and continue editing, albeit slowly, but I can get the job done and get the videos published. And I, I, I just don't like how they force us to pick the amount of uh, storage that we, that we think we're gonna need at the time of purchase. So one thing I would consider doing if you're considering buying a Mac, you know, get the RAM you're gonna need for at least three to six years. But as far as storage goes, you know, get the basic, whether it's 512 or one terabyte, and don't add any more. Yeah, you might need more, but then you know what? Go out and buy yourself some AngelBird, some uh, Samsung external storage, and use that. And you're going to be, you're going to be a lot happier with the cost for one. Uh, the speed won't be as fast because the ones inside the um, the Mac they're RAID zero, and they really are fast, up to three gigabits a second. And the SATA ones, they're around 500, but I really haven't noticed a huge performance gain by editing on the Mac versus editing off the SSDs. 
and they work perfectly. The only issue were, that I did have is when I connected my um, storage to one of my Macs and I used one of those uh, USB to USB-C adapters. It wasn't USB 3.1 and it was sluggish. So you got to make sure you get the right adapters if because so, a lot of the new cables are coming with USB type C. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really impressed by this new M processor architecture. Uh, I'm really curious to see what they're going to do in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. If they can give us 16 gigs without making the price really crazy. In fact, if they can shave five or six hundred dollars off the price of the unit, and not so much them shaving off the price, but if I can go with a much lower end unit and still get 32 gigs of RAM, then yeah, that's probably something I'm going to do. But I can see what Apple's going to do. They're going to give me a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but for me to go up to 32 gigs, I'm probably going to be forced into the same price point as before. And that's the frustrating thing with the way Apple prices things out. If you look at them, the way they've designed it, it's kind of like, well, you're forced up to spend a lot of money, but we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, and one last thing. One of you did ask how I'm feeling after I burned myself the other day. As you can see, it's so much better. I got this nice little scar right now, but it doesn't hurt anymore. Thanks for asking, but that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128 gigabyte AV Pro MK2 V90 SD cards, along with a dual UHS-2 card reader. Or you could also win a Ulanzi LED light package with accent lights, underwater lights, and various other flat panel lights to light your subject, or you can use it as a starter kit for your own channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles to two lucky viewers once the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers, and then I'll be offering up a different prize bundle every 10,000 or so subscribers until the channel reaches 100,000. Of course, at that significant milestone, I'm going to be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Have yourself a good week. We'll see you again soon.